Hello everyone, in this episode I'm going to talk about how you can switch between Blazor WebAssembly and Blazor Server Project for your Blazor application. For demo, of course, we are going to use Blazing Chat application. Blazing Chat is a Blazor WebAssembly application. If I open develop tools, you can see in the console that the DLLs are getting loaded in the browser. These are the DLLs which are getting loaded in the browser. And I would like to run this application as a Blazor server now. This is a full package application, you can call it, where you know authentication is included in it. You can log in and then a JSON web token gets generated. We use that for authentication and authorization. We need to make sure that that functionality works fine in Blazor server too. We also have some uh, database operations using HTTP client. You know, you can create and uh, read, update, delete profiles using this application. We have contacts page where we are loading the contacts using virtualized component. We have signaler functionality using which you can chat with people. We also have um, some switches which are dealing with uh, CSS and JavaScript operation to change the theme of the application. And also we are performing some authorization related operations using assigned roles. John Smith is an admin and that's the reason why John Smith can see the assigned roles page. But uh, if I log in with Julius Caesar, who is not an admin, he shouldn't be able to see that page. So we need to make sure that these functionalities are working fine too when we move to Blazor server application. You can see that now I logged in with Julius Caesar and I don't see assigned roles page here. So let's go ahead and convert this Blazor WebAssembly project, Blazor WebAssembly project into Blazor server project. For that, I'm going to go to my VS Code and first let's kill these uh, servers which are running and uh, we will add a Blazor server project in the same folder. So before I add the project, I would like to show you how the project is structured here. So blazingchat.client is a Blazor WebAssembly project. And then we have Blazing Chat components in which we have all the pages, even the root component is in here. And then we have a shared project, which is a class library in which we have all the classes and the services that we need to run our client. Now, if we have the project references for Blazing Chat components and shared for our Blazor server application, it should be able to run all the functionalities. So let's go ahead and create a Blazor server project. For that, I'm going to go to my terminal and let's create another terminal here in which I'm going to create a Blazor server application. Let me first make sure that I don't have the folder from the previous demos. I do not have it. I'm going to create a new project that I'm going to call as Blazing Chat Server. So I'm going to create a .NET new project, which is going to be Blazor Server. And the name of the project is going to be Blazing, Blazing Chat Server. So once I hit enter, then it's going to create a Blazor server application. If I open my folder structure here, you can see the server project getting created here. And in this project, we are going to have a lot of files. You know, there is a lot of boilerplate code getting generated through the template, but we don't need all those files and all those pages. We have most of the pages that we need in our components project. So we don't need the pages which come out of the box. So I'm going to delete a few things here. I'm going to delete this data folder. I'm going to delete that. I don't need it. It has weather forecast and weather service. I don't need that for my application. So I'm going to delete that. In pages, we have host CSHTML and layout CSHTML. We are going to need these uh, two files because host.cshtml is where we are running the app and we have a root component in a components project here. So we need to, we are going to need this file to run this root component. So I'm going to keep that. And I'm going to need the layout.cshtml 
CSHTML because we have all the CSS references here and this is the layout of the application. For the other components like counter, error, fetch data, index.html, I don't need them. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to select them and delete those razor components. We don't need them. We are also not going to need the shared folder. So if I go to my components project here, I already have shared project, shared folder in which I have main layout and nav menu. So the main layout and nav menu, which come out of the box for Blazor server project, I'm going to delete that. I don't need that. I also don't need import start razor. I have import start razor in my components project. So I'm going to delete import start razor and app also i have it in my components i'm gonna delete these two files i'm also going to delete the root folder ww root folder in which i have css i already have that in my components project i don't need that in my blazor server project now i have the bare minimum structure for blazor server project if i refer my components project and my shared project and use the app root component, this app root component, I should be able to run my application in the server project, in Blazor server project. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add those references. For that, I'm going to go to my WebAssembly project and see how I have added the references. I'm going to grab this item group and then I'm going to add that in my Blazing chat server project so that I have references of components and shared project. And then I'm going to need to tell my host.cshtml. I'm going to go to my pages here again and host.cshtml that this app is actually coming from Blazing chat components. So we'll have to add a using statement here. So I'm going to add using statement, uh, which is going to be for Blazing chat components. And that way it'll know that, okay, this app is actually coming from this project. We don't have it in the current project, this project. And we are also going to change the render mode. I want to run it as server because there are some JavaScript calls that I'm making. And, uh, you know, JavaScript interrupt does not work if it's server pre-rendered. So I'm gonna change this to server and same thing, I'm gonna do it for layout too. So I'm gonna change this to server too. Now I'm going to go to my program.cs. See, this is where we need to add services. We have added services in our WebAssembly project to run our application. First, I'm going to remove some of the lines which could cause compile time errors, like weather service, which we deleted. So I'm going to delete those lines. But just like we added services in our client project in program.cs, these are the services that we added. You know, we added some um, hosting environment, we added app settings, configuration, and also we added, you know, we call this extension method to add other services which are there in Blazing Chat. So I'm gonna call these services. I'm gonna copy this from my client project and go to my Blazor server project and paste these services here. Now I'm going to have to change some names here. This is going to be my host environment, and this is going to be builder.environment.environment. That's something that gets changed in the Blazor server. And we'll have to also add some namespaces. So I'm going to grab these namespaces and add them here so that, you know, these, there won't be any errors. There will be one more namespace that I'm going to need, which is going to be for this for hosting environment. So I'm going to add that to here so we don't get those errors. Now that we have added all the services that we need for our application, I'm going to go to, I think I added this in the client. Right? So I'm going to remove it from here. I'm going to add it into my server project. Okay, sweet. So now that we have added all the services, I'm going to also change layout.cshtml. This is where we are adding all the CSS references. So we are adding CSS references for our application and client project in index.html. So I'm going to grab that code from here where we are you know, adding CSS references. I'm going to grab that and go to my layout.cshtml for the server project. 
and paste it here so that we can get the CSS that we need for our application. And I'm going to change one of the references, which is this blazing chat client.styles.css. This is what we add when we are adding the CSS for CSS isolation. You know, when we have CSS for a particular razor component, so we need to add that. So I'm going to have to change the assembly name here. So I'm going to change this to blazing chat server.styles.css. So this is how you can add CSS references. There is also one reference which is for javascript i'm gonna copy that and add that to here so we need to make sure that we are adding all the css and javascript references in layout.cshtml once we are done with that then the final thing that we need is app settings related changes so in my client project i have these two fields base address and ui framework as app settings configuration and i'm going to need these two for my server project too one is for calling the web api so i need to know the base address of the web api that i'm calling and the second is the ui framework i need my components to know which ui framework that i'm using so i have these two fields i'm gonna copy them and put them in the app setting of my server project so one is going to be for the development and another is going to be for the production. So this is what is for development. I'm going to change this to server. And the second one is going to be for development. I'm going to copy this piece and then go to my development project, development JSON here, and add another section here, which is going to be application settings. And this is going to be for server. So I've made all the app settings related changes too. So the final change, which is going to be in Web API. In Web API, we have added cross-origin resource sharing. So this is how my Web API knows what all client can connect to this Web API. So now we have another client. We need to add that application URL in cross-origin resource sharing configuration in Web API so that it can connect to it and get the data from it. So I'm going to grab the application URL of my Blazor server application and add that in my Web API here. So that's all you need to do in order to convert your Blazor WebAssembly application into server. And this is the same thing that you, you can do from for other way around. You can, if you can have Blazor server application and you can move it to Blazor WebAssembly application too. Now I'm going to go ahead and run my web API. I'm going to say .NET run. I'm also going to run my WebAssembly application. Let's run both the applications and see if they're working fine or not. And also I'm going to run my Blazor server application and see if that is running fine or not. So I'm going to run that too. Let's first see if you're getting any error or not. We are not getting any error. I'm going to copy the URL, go to my browser, and put it here. And if I press F12, you can see that now it's connecting to the server using a WebSocket because it's a Blazor server application. It uses Signal R to make the UI changes. I'm going to click on Login, and then we'll go to Application and Local Storage. You can see that it's generating. JSON Web Token 2, and I'm logged in into the application too. You can see it's bringing in all the data too. It can perform CSS and JavaScript operations too. And it also shows this assigned roles page because John Smith is authorized to see it. But if I log in with Julius Caesar, I shouldn't be able to see that page. And if I go back to my WebAssembly and open developer tools, you can see that WebAssembly project is working fine too. If I go to different pages, they are working fine too. If I try to log in with John Smith, I should be able to log in with John Smith too with the theme changes. 
So this is how you can switch between your Blazor WebAssembly and server project by using an abstract project structure. With that, I'm going to end this video. But before that, I'm going to ask a question. What does R stand in SignalR? What does R mean in SignalR? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comment section below, or you can reach out to me on my Twitter or Facebook handle. Thank you again. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.